from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. It's Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Sunday, the first day of June 2014. As you tune into this original, special Sunday transmission, we're here every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., and then back weekdays live, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central with the weekday transmission. Wow, a lot of Bilderberg coverage of the week with our crew coming up. We're going to be... Uh, breaking down on this Sunday edition. We have four guests coming up. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts getting into the Ukraine situation, what's really happening with the economy, the gear up for an implosion. Larry Pratt, the founder of Gun Owners of America, he believes they're going to try to sign an executive order, making you get biometric guns and banning all the others. I mean, this is huge, what's coming up on that front. We have our media analyst, uh, John Rappaport, joining us on a host of issues. Uh, and Bilderberg and, 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 and media control. And then finally, uh, co-author of Tom Clancy novels with some incredible breaking intel on the mass shooting and more, Steve Pachinik. All that and more coming up on this Sunday, Worldwide Transmission. This is a revolution of awakening, a revolution of liberty, a revolution of freedom. And we are affecting change. They didn't want people to know that Bilderberg existed. Just 10 years ago, the media would say it didn't exist. The New York Times in 2007 said I was insane it didn't exist. 2008. It's 2008. Now it's all over NBC, CBS, you name it. And it's because of sites like DrudgeReport.com. It's because of Infowars.com. It's because of my great crew. It's because of you, the listeners, our sponsors, all of us that love liberty, promoting each other, supporting each other, coming together for renaissance and human freedom and true liberalism in the form of Thomas Jefferson, not the fascism and corruption of the so-called Democrats uh, and their Republican cohorts. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so honored to be here with you on this worldwide transmission, and I'm just excited because when I see more and more mainstream media trying to stay pertinent, being forced to admit Bilderberg and even saying, yeah, why are they meeting in secret? Are they violating the Logan Act, the Official Secrets Act? Uh, you know, should there be investigations? We've come so far once we identify the globalists. It's amazing what we can do. Once we show their special interests that are controlling things, crony capitalists, the opposite of free market, we can stop the globalists from scapegoating true libertarianism and true free market and true private property and family and, 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 and whatever you're into. The mutual... Uh, aggression truce, that I won't initiate aggression on you unless I'm defending myself and you won't on me. And you'll let me live my life and you can live your life and I won't try to use government to run your life. You don't do it to me. That builds an amazing society. Doesn't mean it's not a moral society because then what works becomes popular. It's not what gang you're in or what special interest you're in. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's what type of production you're involved in, what you've produced, what you've done, what you've made, uh, what you stand for. People come see you because of what you have done and, and, and who you are, not off of what group you're part of. I mean, I don't care if you're black or white. If you play the guitar great and sing great, I want to come hear you and I admire you. I don't care if you're Asian or American Indian or, or Mexican. If, if, uh, if I admire your art, I'll hang it in my house and then try to invite you over to dinner if I can. Because that's true humans admiring each other, and that builds a better and better society as people vote with their feet, vote with their opinions, vote with their dollars, vote with their applause, or vote with their disdain for what they like and what they don't like. That is the essence of freedom. We don't need the government to make us free. We change our lives and become more free. doesn't matter what their phony laws say. They will move in our direction. And that's what's happening across the board. And we'll be talking about that with John Rappaport uh, today as well. So four guests. I'm going to just sometimes I think I'm going to jam pack this Sunday show with quick two segment interviews. L if everybody shows up today, and I think they will, S Larry Pratt, Paul Craig Roberts, Steve Pachinik, John Rappaport, and good old, you know, the, the, the crazy Texan that loves freedom so much. He, he stutters and talks over his guest. Yours truly, Alexander Emmerich Jones. All right, folks, that was the first five-minute segment. The main transmission's coming up. 
It's carried by all of our great affiliates across the country. Stay with us and tell your friends and family to tune in and be part of the human awakening, the restoration of liberty. Broadcasting worldwide, I am your host, Alex Jones. We have Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, father of Reaganomics, uh, former head of the uh, Treasury and Policy of Reagan, coming on to talk about the economy, uh, the wars, uh, Obama, what's happening with the dollar. Uh, we have the co-author of many of uh, the books with Tom Clancy joining us, as well, Dr. Steve Pachinik, to talk about the latest Snowden revelations uh, and a lot more. He's also a psychiatrist, and we'll uh, look at uh, what happened with Elliot Roger. Uh, last weekend when he uh, killed some of the uh, folks uh, reportedly out there in California. Half of the six he killed was with a knife, but you never hear that really in the media. Should we all be collectively guilty because we own knives that he used a butcher knife? It's just as stupid to say gun owners should be collectively responsible for the gun. Uh, but that's really how crazy it is. That's coming up as well. And we have our media analyst uh, to get into Bilderberg, 2014, which is closing down today with our reporters over in Copenhagen reporting all week. And tomorrow, the global elite being exposed and their agenda almost to a man to disarm the people, to consolidate power, uh, and to have crony capitalism, the opposite of free market capitalism, uh, which shuts down their competition. That's coming up as well with John Rappaport today. So four guests on this Sunday transmission. And joining us for this segment the next... On the Second Amendment front, and so much more, is the head of Gun Owners of America, the group that keeps the NRA honest, the only no-compromise Second Amendment organization in the country. That's a Ron Paul quote. Larry Pratt to cover the waterfront. First off, there's a Second Amendment angle on the VA. General Shinseki, uh, what was it, on Friday, resigned along with Jay Carney. The exodus from the Obama sinking ship accelerates as he tries to blame his underlings. Uh, the VA, folks, has been treating people like garbage for a long time, but it's gotten worse under Obama. People try to say, oh, don't politicize it. It is political. The Republicans are going to score points. So what? Let them. The fact is the troops are being treated like garbage. They're being denied care. They're being told they've had procedures done that haven't been. This is horrible. And I don't care if the Republicans make it political. This is a crime that's going on. So it's not okay just because people are making it political. They're trying to change the subject. And I wanted to get Larry Pratt's take on this. The mass shooting a week, eight days ago, nine days ago, and other gun grabbing going on. Larry Pratt, thanks for joining us. Alex, thanks for having me. I really appreciate your show and appreciate being on it. You, uh, you've got us started, I think, in the right direction for this discussion. The... Um, the um, VA has become a really ugly scandal. A whistleblower in Phoenix uh, has reported 1,700 vets that have not even been put on a waiting list uh, in order to get treatment. I guess the thinking was that that way uh, nobody would realize just how bad the problem was if they didn't have a waiting list to, to look at. So in in one case, the government is not interested in keeping lists of Americans, but in another case where they're not supposed to, they do. And by that, I'm saying that they are making lists of us when we get our backgrounds checked. And they, we know that they're doing it. Uh, they've done longitudinal studies, uh, letting scholars uh, at the background check data. And if you can do a longitudinal study over a period of time, that means they haven't destroyed the data after 24 hours. Surprise. Uh, and I believe that this administration would be quite capable if there were some kind of excuse like a, a Katrina or any sort of a, uh, a declaration of a state of siege or who knows what this guy is capable of doing, uh, they've already shown what they did at, after Katrina. They went to the gun stores. I think they got better technology now. And they collected the names of gun owners in and around New Orleans. And then they went door to door. So it's already happened in our country and then just yesterday the house sprang a surprise vote uh, nominal republican peter king um, uh, wants to shovel millions of more dollars uh, to the national criminal instant check system so that they can have uh, more money 
uh, for states to gather up more names of people who have not been adjudicated of committing a crime of violence or perhaps uh, suspected of endangering, endangering themselves. No due process, just give us the names. And that's not a good sign. That's very concerning, very concerning. So this is just hot off the press. These guys sprang this as a surprise vote, and a lot of Republicans voted wrong on it, and it may be the only quote-unquote gun vote this year, and they're going to look pretty bad. Shifting gears into other issues, the Washington Times last week got an Army document by concerned people, uh, and, and it openly said, and this is official, been confirmed, that they're training with tanks, armored vehicles, uh, drones under an Obama directive 2012 uh, to take on the American people, namely the Tea Party. Forbes also reported on that. Uh, so the, the, the billions of bullets, uh, the Homeland Security saying the Tea Party's the threat. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, what is Obama thinking? Well, he's certainly not thinking that Muslims are a threat. Uh, so he's turning to his political opponents, declaring that they're the enemy, and ignoring the fact that Muslims uh, from time to time have a tendency to go boom. And it, it is really... Uh, shows how upside down mixed up they are but we shouldn't be surprised because some time ago homeland uh, insecurity chief uh, janet napolitano uh, fingered veterans as uh, potential terrorists uh, people who uh, believe in the second amendment that are pro-life that uh, uh, want to work for limited government i guess that the idea of limited government really would terrorize a socialist so maybe i if we look at it from her point of yeah, view yeah to them it's terrorism <laughs> i mean uh, george washington freedom they're scared of it i think that's exactly right i know it sounds preposterous probably to people listening to to this show uh, except for the few uh, that might be monitoring for the government but the fact of the matter is i do think they tend to think that way uh, the, the the enemy is freedom and uh, they really are doing what they can to uh, extinguish it uh, this is a this is a very dangerous administration yeah. and they they don't seem to have any concern at all about acting uh, without any authority. They just, as the president one time said, I, if the Congress won't uh, move, then I've got a pen and I've got a phone. And uh, I guess, you know, the, uh, the emperor is able to do that. Uh, of course, he's probably confusing emperorship and presidency. That's right. And in case a new listener is doubting me on this, it's inside the ring. Respected journalist Bill Gertz. Memo outlines Obama's plan to use the military against citizens. High-level Pentagon source sent him the document. He was able to confirm it's real, though restricted. And they have a link to the document in the article. Uh, and it's a multi-hundred-page report fully detailing the plan to suppress the American people. I think there should be congressional investigations about this right now. Um, let's hope. Uh, and they might have the investigation, but what they need to do is put some heat on the, uh, the court that would ultimately receive the criminal complaint if, if they can have an investigation and then produce a criminal complaint as uh, they did with the contempt citation of Eric Holder. They turned that over to the D.C. federal court. That was over a year ago. Nothing has happened. Now, the House is not helpless. The House, if it had the determination, could simply uh, tell the court, you know, in the next budget, we're just not going to be able to find the money for you all, uh, at least not until you... Uh, That's the way to do it. Just cut the money off. So until they get on the stick, just tell them that uh, uh, their fat checks are not going to be able to be sent out. Larry Pratt, we're going to have a jam-packed segment coming up. I'm going to try to give you the floor to break down the latest attacks on the Second Amendment uh, and where they're coming from. Folks can sign up at gunowners.org for your free legislative alerts or become a member. Folks, if you don't become a member of the Gun Owners of America, you don't care about the Second Amendment. We'll be right back with Larry Pratt. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com, where we defend the entire Bill of Rights. Patriotic song and lyrics. In fact, I could read the lyrics of that song, I think, just in the show right now. It says it all. Now, we have an amazing guest coming up, and, of course, I think the most amazing right up front, Larry Pratt. And the reason I say that is I've studied politics. I've been in it 20 years, more than that. He's been in it 50 years promoting liberty, proto-Tea Party. If it wasn't for Gun Owners of America, and I don't usually gush with most our guests, it's just true, 
we wouldn't have a Second Amendment right now to any extent. We'd be like England or Australia. Uh, they're following the same blueprint. Gun owners was also able to radicalize the NRA.